All right. So, so we've so we've learned so far. We've learned we've learned how to enter a lead in. I mean, that's a step before you even you work a lead that's already come into the system. So let's say a career builder lead comes in the system. It's already sitting there. A searchlight lead. It's already sitting there. But we learn how to just enter a lead properly, and the best practices for doing that. You got to change that status immediately to whatever happened, right? Make sure you put a source in there. I don't care what the source is. There's got to be a source. So those two things have to begin there. We don't enter a lead unless it has an email address or a phone number or preferably both. Um, so anyway, we went over all that. Next thing we went over is, okay, once the lead's in the system, what are some of the best practices for doing that? We went over the difference between a task and an event. Okay, A task is not specifically time specific, meaning it's not 3.31 on Friday afternoon. It's just call me back in two weeks, call me back in three weeks. An event, while you're working the lead, event is something that is time specific. Somebody saying, call me back on 3.30 on this day, right? And so that's that's that. And we also looked at what a lead is. I mean, a lead, the status of a lead. So the status is just to let us know how far we've gotten along. I put left message. I only need to put left message there, whether I leave one or a hundred. But the second I have a conversation, I convert them to conversation. And now I know that I've had one conversation with this guy at some point in the life of the lead. It never goes back to left message again, even though I'm calling him and leaving messages and writing down the bottom of the lead. So we went over that. And finally, with the lead itself, we went over how to convert the lead. And so when to convert them. So we did, that's a two-step process, right? We never convert unless we schedule an interview. So we fictitiously scheduled an interview with our lead, Jeff Smith. And so we converted him first to an account. And then once we did that, we did step two, which is creating a new opportunity. And then we talked about the last thing in that same video. We talked about how to, how to uh, set up an opportunity and that we only now work Jeff Smith from the opportunity screen. That's all we ever do. And so that's where we ended it. So where we're going to begin today and where we're going to begin on this video is we're going to begin by looking at how to work the opportunity. Start to finish, what we need to do to make sure an opportunity is worked properly. Okay. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go into our uh, screen here. And I had to get away there for a second, but let's see if we can go in there and work this. There we go. All right. So now, again, um, what I'm going to do with this Jeff Smith guy now is I'm going to go to my opportunity screen. And now I see the opportunities are here. So I'm going to go into Jeff Smith and click on opportunity. I'm only going to work Jeff Smith in the opportunity. I'm not going to work the account anymore. I'm not going to work anything other than the opportunity. He doesn't live in Leeds anymore. So if I go search for him over here in Leeds, you go to his house and that subdivision, he's no longer living there. Somebody, another family's living there, right? Because he doesn't live there anymore. He lives in accounts. Uh, but we don't want to go work him in accounts. We only want to work him in opportunity. So we have different stages of opportunities. The first stage is an interview schedule. So you schedule an interview. What happens? Well, let's say that Jeff comes in for the interview. And uh, let's, say that, well, let's say that he gives you a call. And Jeff cancels the interview for the 18th saying, oh, I forgot I have a dentist appointment on the 18th. I can't, I can't do that anymore. Can we do the 19th at the same time? Can we do the 19th at 3 o'clock? That's fine. You, you say, yep, I've got that time open. Let's do it. And that's fine. So you guys get all that worked out. Say, I'll send you another whatever. And you say, okay, let's work it out. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to, uh, you're going to go to stage. And you're going to mark in that this interview canceled. Okay. Now, all I got to do is save that. Here's what happens when you do that. The date pops in that he canceled. So the date pops in. Whatever day I worked, did that, that's what day the date pops in down here. Okay. So now what do I want to do? I want to go into reschedule. Interview rescheduled. Hit save. But my schedule date has changed. So I need to go in and change my schedule date to the 19th at 3 o'clock p.m. And 
now I'm going to hit save. Okay, so now all of that is a matter of record. It shows that I scheduled an interview, I canceled the interview, and then I rescheduled an interview all the same day, right? But I, but for reporting, from a reporting point of view, all of that will be reportable in the system. That this guy has gone through all of those stages, so you know, kind of like the record of this person. All right, so let's say that they uh, so interview interview day happened. Let's say that on the interview day, three o'clock comes and goes, and Jeff Smith doesn't show up for his interview. So we're we're bummed out, right? But what we want to do is make sure we immediately go in the system and notate that interview no show. Hit save. Now here's what I'm going to do. I want to go in and I want to make a call to Jeff. I want to I want to call Jeff and say, "Hey, what's going on, man? Why didn't you <laughs> Why didn't you show up?" So I call him, and uh, you know I get him on the phone. There's his number right there. So I call him, right? And we get on the phone, and Jeff is like, "Oh my goodness, this completely slipped my mind today. I'm you know I was knocked offline. I didn't see your email. I uh, you know I I really apologize. Uh, can I come in tomorrow?" You say, sure, that'll be fine. I've got 3 o'clock open tomorrow. So first thing I want to do is log the call. I'm logging the call within the interview. Um, um, you know, so I'm, I'm saying that uh, you know, I made an outbound call. And you can just say, uh, If I could type today, I'd be dangerous. Okay, and so I just put call dash inquire about no show, and I put in uh, candidate was really sorry wants to come in tomorrow. Whatever I want to put there. Now, uh, you know, I'm not going to schedule a task or anything with this. I'm just going to save it. I'm going to set a reminder. I'm just going to save it. Okay. And so now I've got a note here. I can go down here and there's his. Now there's right. I wanted to call to inquire about no show. And it shows I called him. And now here we go again. We interview reschedule. Right. And so now I'm going to put the reschedule in there. Now, the correct dates will update as you're doing this on the system automatically. It's all, all the dates right now in this hypothetical lead are showing the 11 because that's, I'm working it all as, I, as I'm talking to you here, okay? So, um, we reschedule. Now, the, the date comes, the 19th or the 18th or the 20th or whatever day it is now that we're interviewing Jeff Smith. He finally shows up. Everybody is happy. It was just all a big misunderstanding, and everybody loves Jeff. You love Jeff. The broker loves Jeff. Um, and you guys, you guys make an offer to Jeff. And Jeff says, "Look, I love this opportunity. I got to talk to two other brokerages, um, but I will let you know in a couple of days, okay? And there's nothing you could do. So, yeah, okay, great. You make an offer. And and by the way, any time that you um, that you have somebody that shows up in your office, it is one of two things. It should always be. It should always either be made an offer or you rejected the candidate." Don't ever miss out on that golden opportunity when somebody comes into the office and you don't make them an offer. And that's just a little bonus piece of information. It doesn't have anything to do with Salesforce, but you don't want to get people in there and then have to follow up with them. you know. And you can say, well, we couldn't make him an offer because he didn't have his license. Well, don't schedule an interview until he has his license. You see what I'm saying? So don't schedule the interview until he can say yes. He, has the, he might not say yes, but he has the ability to say yes. And then once he gets in there in the interview, Make an offer if you like them, if you don't reject them, and move on. And so now I'm just going to save. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to notate that I've made an offer. All right. So this is best practices whether you do an interview or whether you do anything else. And so what I'm going to do, what I might want to do here is I'm just going to go down. I see I made an offer. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down to tasks. So I'm going to scroll down here. And I'm going to put a new task for myself. 
And my new task is going to be follow. It's going to be change status. You know, Okay, so I'm going to put change status from offer. And now the due date on this one, let's say it's going to be five days from whatever day the interview was. I mean, we're kind of dealing in the past right here, so it doesn't really matter what the day is. I'm going to put the 15th. So what this is going to do is um, I'm going to remind myself, um, you know, what I'm going to do is just remind myself here that, you know, if uh, Jeff, Just update Salesforce. So what I'm just reminding myself to do is update Salesforce if I haven't heard from him yet. Right? So this way I don't get into any trouble by forgetting. You can see this is always already related to Jeff Smith, but if it wasn't, I could click that box right there and find Jeff Smith and relate it to that opportunity. So so this opportunity is already related. I haven't started it. Don't um you know, let's say that I do want a reminder and I, I you know, I if I haven't done it by one o'clock, I want to do it at that point. So now I just hit save. So I set up a new task with this opportunity, and it really is just a reminder for me to change the status from offer. So as soon as I put offer made in there, I'm going to set that reminder for myself to do that so I don't forget to do it. He calls me up and he says, look, uh, Ray, Ray uh, you know, I, we thought about it. I'm not going to move brokerages right now, but zip is top of my mind. Could you just give me a call back in three or four months or whatever? I might do that. I might set the follow up and all that good stuff, but I, sometimes I'll forget to come back in and change that stage. And then later on, you know, Ray and Adam are trying to do a report and we see here an offer made that never had any follow up. And so that is a bad thing. So you want to make sure that you, that you have followed up and you make sure that you know exactly what's going on with these guys. And your offer declines, let me tell you, that is the best source for a new business. So if you go back and pull a report, on offer to clients from like four or five months ago, you're going to get a bunch of those guys recruited. So that's why you want to make sure that that's not a bad stage to be in. So what I'm going to do now, let's just say the time has arrived and is an offer to client. And so I'm going to go in and put offer to client when he hits save, whenever he calls me or after the, after the time elapsed. And then, you know, I'm, you know, let's say the time elapsed, I haven't heard from him. I'm going to set a follow-up date for this guy to call him tomorrow, you know, or just keep on calling him as often as you want to call him. But as far as the system goes, after the time elapsed date, he's declined. Or let's say that you talk to Jeff, and Jeff is like, look, I'm still thinking about it. I love Zip. I love the idea. I'm just not ready. I need to do a couple other things. I need to check with this, that, and the other thing. And so you're, you're working with him. You're in contact with him. He's still hot. He's still ready to go. He's just not ready to commit yet. Still put off or decline there. And you will have one of the best stats that we look at eventually. When he does call you back after you put offer or decline, so next week he calls you back and he says, all right, I've done exactly what I need to do. Now I'm ready to go. Send me paid for it. Converting that offer decline into a offer or into, an, uh, into a hire is one of the best stats that we'd love to see because it just shows that you, know, you are working those leads. You're not letting them die on the vine. Many leads turn into offer declines in the beginning that switch up. You still work that lead and do what you're supposed to, but you've got to have you we've got to have follow up in the system because otherwise it's just hanging out there and the reporting just goes goes to <laughs> egg in a handbasket, right? So we got to have that. All right, so that is how you work an opportunity up until this point. Now, uh, the next video we'll be doing is a different time. We'll tell you, okay, now Jeff Smith has accepted the offer. And now you need to get Jeff Smith through the license transfer process, MLS transfer process, red carpet process, all that good stuff. How do I go about doing that? And so the next video that we do will show us how to get that piece of the puzzle fixed. Thank you, guys.